The next thing we need to do is consider how we actually treat this in the general journal and general ledger. So right in the beginning of study unit five, I said that any of your transactions could use the general journal to be brought into the books. So we don't have to have a CRJ, we don't have to have a CPJ, we could use a general journal. So every single transaction, all your transactions could be brought into your books using a general journal. So that's how I'm gonna start showing you the VAT and how we treat the VAT and how we deal with it and the way that this looks in the general ledger. So we can add this to our current knowledge. So how do we account for VAT? At the moment, a sales journal without VAT would look like this. And this is what we have kind of covered up to now. We would credit sales with 120 and we would debit bank with 120 if this was cash sales, if there was no VAT. My general journal, obviously my date, my, my item tells me that these are cash sales. How would I account for this if there was VAT though? Let's take a look at that. If we change this example, so on the 1st of August, there were cash sales of 120 Rand and this represents the VAT exclusive amount. It means that we have to calculate the VAT inclusive amount. So if there is VAT in a question and I indicate to you <clears throat> what number you're dealing with, you're going to have to calculate the inclusive amount. Why? Well, because when you sell that item, you're not actually charging the person 120. The person has to pay you more than that because that is your exclusive amount. The person has to pay you 120 plus VAT. So we have to calculate that first. So your journal would change and this is what your journal would look like. We would still debit bank, but keep in mind that bank, the money that we are going to be put into the bank is going to be our inclusive amount, our VAT inclusive amount. Because when someone comes into my shop and says, I'd like to take that item and I say that is 120 Rand plus VAT, they've got to pay me the inclusive amount. 120 times 1.14 times 114 percent is 136 rand 80 okay make sure you're happy with that my sales amount however is only 120 rand i recognize my sale for the full 100 percent value that i believe that i'm going to get for it okay that's what i wanted for it my 120 the difference the 14 percent goes to a an account called VAT. It's a VAT control account. And this shows me that I'm going to have to pay the government. This creates a liability. In the general ledger, this will be sitting underneath liabilities. And that means at some point in time, I have to pay that amount over to the receiver. So we can see if we look at our percentages that 114% of the amount went into the bank. 100% of the amount is my sale and 14% of the amount goes to the receiver. And again, you can start to see how we calculate this back and forward. <clears throat> Pay very close attention. We will never credit sales with the VAT inclusive amount because that amount does not belong to me. It is not my sale. That amount, that additional 14% is the receiver saying you charge them 14% and then you hand it straight over to me. So when we post this to the general ledger, you'll see that this actually creates a liability as I've said. So let's take a look at that. Our posting to the general ledger in our bank account we will debit 136 Rand 80 because that's the actual money that I have in my bank account. 120 Rand of that represents sales because that is my sales and my value added tax it is a B2 item. It is in my statement of financial position. This creates a liability. This shows me that I owe the receiver 16 Rand 80. And for every single sale I make, 14% of that sale must go into that account. So in terms of my general journal, I will debit the bank by the full 114%. I will credit sales with 100% and I will credit the value added tax with 14%. So pay attention to the detail. Now, what if I said to you, your journal, it's a cash sale of 120 Rand, but this time the 120 is VAT inclusive. Remember, the last journal we looked at was VAT exclusive, which meant that we were charging 14% on top of the 120 Rand. Now in this example, the 120 includes the 14%. So we've got to be careful about that. So 120 Rand is the total amount that's going into the bank account. So again, remember in the bank account, 
full 114 goes because that's exactly how much I'll get paid. I'm not supposed to be putting the full 120 Rand. I'm not supposed to be putting the full 114% of the sale into my sale because that's not right. I should only recognize 100% of that sale and 14% of that sale should go to the receiver, should go to VAT. So you can see the calculation difference. Now you can see why in the previous lecture I said it's very important for you to be able to work out what the VAT exclusive amount would be. If we take 120 Rand and we divide it by 114 and we multiply it by 100, we'll get 105.26 and that will be my sales amount. If we take 120 Rand and we divide it by 114, my total amount, and we multiply it by 14, you'll get 14.74, which will be your value added tax, your VAT amount. When we take a look at these, <clears throat> Our journals, our journals would be exactly the same, but the amounts would be different, right? We would still be debiting bank because we have cash sales that have gone into the bank, but the amount will now be 120. That was the full 114% that we got in. My sales amount is 105.26 and my value added tax is 14.74. I owe the receiver 14.74. My concern here and what I want you to be aware of is how that one small little word, the inclusive versus the exclusive, if you take a look at these two examples, look how they have changed those details. And that's my worry, okay? Pay attention to that detail and make sure that you understand what number you're looking for. If I said to you that I am quoting a figure X VAT, excluding VAT, it means that you're gonna to have to pay me more than what I'm telling you. And you hear this all the time. People always talk about prices and say, I'll sell this amount to you, and they go, is that VAT inclusive or exclusive? Is that including or excluding? VAT exclusive, VAT inclusive. X VAT, ink VAT, okay? So these types of terminology you gotta be very careful about because you can see how different your numbers are gonna look just because I said this is exclusive and that is inclusive. So in terms of journalizing items, get very comfortable with your debits and credits and realize that your value added tax, it creates a liability. We put it in a totally separate account. We create a totally separate account to show that we're going to have to pay and we owe the receiver. This is a liability. We are holding this money in the bank account at the moment. You can see the debit is in the bank account. We are holding the money in the bank, but it doesn't belong to us. It's not our sale. We have to pay that over to the receiver. So get very flexible with these calculations, VAT exclusive, VAT inclusive, how to get from one to the other. Make sure you're very comfortable with your detail, the difference, the 114%, the 100%, the 14%, and then we can carry on and make sure that we can take into account or take VAT into account for any transaction, however it may arise.